what brings you joy in your work? Um, um, what brings me joy? Um, uh, the, the way that we are engaging to the Knights of Rizal um, in some other ways other than uh, those um, cere ceremonies and activities. Uh, it gives me joy, no, that people will share your will share something about the Knights of Rizal, something about Rizal. Then sometimes they will contribute information to us, no. That is one of the joys that we can uh, that I get when uh, performing my duties. Also, one of the uh, one uh, another one is um, uh, helping the Supreme Council, no, uh, reach their goals, no, as the one of the staff here at the office. No, um, I'm doing not only the the postings on Facebook. No, sometimes I help the staff in doing the minutes of the meeting of the Supreme Council. Sometimes I prepare the Zoom meetings because not all of the council members can join. So I, I together with uh, Kuya Jesse, we set up here at the headquarters so that um, some of the members from far away uh, regions can join. We also develop um, our Bagumbayan. So I'm one of the editors together with Sir Mark. Um, what was the experience when you, what was the best experience that showed you that uh, you're being valued by the organization, by the Knights of Rizal? All your uh, actions, all the product of your work is being valued. Is there any particular uh, experience that you got that, wow, uh, you know, you were impressed that because you were, you you thought you were your your contribution is being valued by uh, the organization. Um, I believe here, sir, here at the headquarters, together with the staff, we believe that um, teamwork and cooperation mm -hmm. brings uh, bring the magic here. So we collaborated. For example, um, we had ceremonies here at the headquarters. Um, it's not only me that uh, performed the work, but also our staff, Miss Maureen, Miss Babylin. Kuya Jesse, Kuya June, and other Knights of Rizal. So the sight of the activities being successful, it brings me um, a different kind of um, ecstasy, you know, that, um, you know, this is uh, the hard work that we're doing, you know. Um, the preparations are very painstaking because sometimes there are some members, some postulants who are very demanding. Sometimes there are also Knights of Rizal who are um, very careless. Sometimes there are Knights of Rizal who are really um, going to detail. But at the end of the day, um, when all the, the work is done, um, we can say that uh, the products that we've done uh, are successful. Then we can say that um, the project that we're doing are successful and teamwork, collaboration are at play. Now, what made, made you feel that you're being valued? Sir, um, I'm happy to work here uh, with the Knights of Rizal even though um, uh, even though there's no there's nothing to give or nothing to receive from them you know? because uh, being a Knight of Rizal no, um, duty is duty to our organization and duty in the name of Rizal no, is the uh, are the paramount um, virtues that we should have no? um, the sight of the people being satisfied with the with the activities that we set up here, that that that's already okay with me. No, oh, you're very uh, unselfish, and uh, that's probably why you're being effective. Um, can you give me an example of a f funny, um, uh, funny situation that happened in the uh, in the international headquarters? Like maybe. Um, that wa um, I remember that when I was in college, you no, know, um, when I was in Kapadis, I, I was not yet a Knight of Rizal. So this one, a regional commander, he is um, he talks English. So the people here sometimes had a hard time talking English. So they pushed me. They always push me. Timuti ko na magsalita don, kasi ano? Kasi tasa English, we cannot we cannot sustain talking in English. But at the end of the day, that person no supported us, no. Um, nice. Sometimes there are, I uh, know, there are knights of Rizal who are um, already on your on their senior years. They would like to repeat things, no? Um, um, they would always ask for things we have already given them. Tapos ask the same thing over and over. Yes, sir. And then one <laughs> of the experiences I had here, uh, no, he is one of the prolific knights of Rizal during his era. Now he's already past eight years old. 
he would call, always call the headquarters and then uh, he would ask us to take some dictations and we don't know where would that dictations would be. Baba, I would like to give a speech, no? Um, please uh, take down this uh, dictation for me. And then afterwards, if we will go be going to follow up, he, he don't he does not remember anything. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's that's another another. Uh, not only are you unselfish, uh, but you're also very understanding of the uh, mature, more mature members of the knights. <laughs> that's very nice. What what physical? Uh, object in the office uh, would you like to be in the time capsule and why? Um, a phys uh, physical pictures of how did how did this building came upon? Um, we had the group, uh, we have a very colorful history of our KOR building since we have purchased the land for one peso from the government up to now. And then a recording of the of the old day, uh, no, the longest um, serving um, KOR staff, that is Kuya June Balios. When the Knights of Rizal building started, he's already here up to now. No, it's already his retirement. It's past his retirement, but he is still working with us. June, Kuya June for us is um, the one stop person you can ask about anything about the Knights of Rizal, even the personalities of the Supreme Commanders. The very funny uh, the very funny anecdotes that uh, the Knights of Rizal have. He is um, the wit eyewitness of all you know, the activities that happened since um, this building was established until now. And it is, he is really a gold mine. They ask you which Knight of Rizal you look up to. Who would it be and what would be the reason? Uh, that would be my chapter commander. That is Sir Erlindo C. Dionisio. No, um, he is the one who introduced me to the Knights of Rizal. No, as a student who loved history and love uh, Filipino culture, it is Sir Lindo. Who, Lindo, he is known as Lindo. So Sir Lindo exposed me to what is Rizalism, um, how to love the country based from the tenets of Rizal, also the Rizalian leadership because he has that. No, together with humility. He does not brag of all his achievements to the Knights of Rizal. If he has money um, to sponsor activities, he would pitch in money, you know, sometimes asking members, don't pitch in. I have already pitched in money for that. And up, up until now, the respect of the members to Sir Lindo is still high that the members would not want to have an election for that position. Mm -hmm. They would want Sir Lindo to remain as chapter commander until the day he died. Uh, which, uh, aside from my chapter, okay, don't mention my chapter, which foreign chapter, I should say, uh, do you do impress impressed you and why? Hmm. Um, with foreign chapters, uh, I've not much uh, encountered some of the foreign chapters, but I'm really amazed, not with the whole, with, not with only one chapter, but with the whole area. I'm amazed with um, the United Kingdom in Ireland, actually. They're really very active with, when it comes to propagation of results, teachings. Even though they're far away, they continue to congregate even in Zoom, no? to have these lectures to other knights from around the globe. And then they, um, they um, you know, the, the spirit of the tandem of Lady Aurea and uh, Sir... Um, Alfonso Tagyang, it's really a powerhouse cast, no? And they really pulled out strings of different knights to be together and uh, create, no, a powerful area where Rizal's virtues and uh, teachings are uh, reigning supreme with all the members. Nice. Now, of all the activities of the KOR, not the Kaparis, which excites you? Ah, it's in Riley. Same with Sir Mark. We have the same passion on in Riley because we are in Riley children. <laughs> Why does that um, excite in you? Riley, in in Riley number one, we meet different people, no different religion, different um, different uh, philosophies in life, different standings in life. So when you go to in Riley, all of those are erased because all student leaders. 
and uh, you can learn from them i can uh, i can learn from those uh, from those student leaders from those youth um, they can learn also from us and then you know um when you go when you stay in Baguio for one week and uh, enjoy all the activities the contests and then the frolics that uh, are available there um, it will it will make your um, your philosophy in life uh, really change no? and um, it brings us many memories no after the enrile we have that sepunks no or uh, se separation anxiety we don't want to go back to manila because of what happened in baguio mm -hmm. now um in uh, Jose Rizal, what do you, what impressed you most about Jose Rizal? Um, it's on the personality of Dr. Jose Rizal. No? Um, some people would look Rizal on a high pedestal, but um, as I um, indulge with his readings and the different activities of the Knights of Rizal, we can also see the facet of Rizal as a normal person. No? He is a person, he is a real person like us experienced hardships, who gained knowledge from others, shared his um, his pain, his uh, joys with others. So Rizal is uh, really an international man. You know? And that enjoys me a lot. And then also Rizal loves education. Um, as an educator myself, no, I want students to learn from me also. And also applying Rizalian uh Applying Rizalian um, principles when I do my teaching, my teaching stuff you now at school. So you know, Rizalism and uh, education cannot be separated. Now, I, I know we all have high praises uh, of Doctor Rizal because of, uh, like you said, he he not only of his tremendous accomplishments, but but also his uh, character as a human being. Um, let me ask you. On the other hand, what would be for you an ideal night of Rizal? Uh, an ideal night of Rizal is selfish and humble. No, um, you know, uh, it's not material. It's not important if you are um, of high of high status in life or if you are um, privileged. No, but or um, educate, more, very educated. But if you are in the Knights of Rizal, you can learn a lot from your co knights. Eh? Um, if you are humble, um, if you're ready to learn from uh, the experiences that you have in the Knights of Rizal, and then also you are unselfish, then it is an ideal Knights of Rizal. Uh, all of the all of the other traits will follow, no? After you have those two, if you are unselfish, I remember Sir Rado's interview with you. I I watch all of you, of the interviews you done. Thank you. Sir Rato would tell you love of country. No? If you are unselfish, you will love your country. And that will follow. Sir Mark, uh, Sir, uh, other, Mar uh, other knights said they would be uh, humble. And that is one principle that we should first um, Im imbibe in our hearts. Because if we're not humble, we cannot receive results, um, ideals, principles, and teachings. Now, you more than any... Um, other um, Knights of Rizal that I know who is not a member of the Supreme Council, you have a, a good view of uh, their accomplishments of this particular one. Uh, yes. If they would ask you, what is the best accomplishment? Just give me one. What is the best accomplishment of this set of Supreme Council? What would you say? Um, their best accomplishment is that um, they improve the membership system. How so? Um, they have already achieved uh, different uh, chapters. No, they have, we have chartered different chapters because so, uh, sometimes I was also delegated to be one of the part, one of the uh, one part of the team that um, does the knighthood, does the chartering. So I'm very happy that there are many chapters already, and also um, inside the the meetings of the head of the council, um, you will see that um, the members are not just uh, approved, no, just because um, they just applied membership. They will look at the you know the profile of the members if they have already complied with the with the orientation rules, no. But because before. Um, even if you're not um, oriented, you can be a member. But now, there are really policies that you should consider and you should uh, follow before you become a Knight of Rizal. 
and that is one of the best uh one of the best um accomplishments that the Knights of Rizal Supreme Council now has, has achieved uh if you have a chance to talk to the new supreme commander knowing not know, knowing uh, a lot in the uh, in the uh, back office side of the Knights of Rizal uh, what would you tell him if you were if he asked you for a heart to heart talk about the Knights of Rizal how what would you tell him the newly Number elected one. supreme council yes the supreme Number commander one. excuse me yes sir I would like to ask the, the the future supreme commander number one. How would he support the counterparties? You no, know, sometimes they're they're shadow, um, Kaparis, um, the the Maklaris, the Nasdamas, or there, if there is a concrete plan. Number two, I would ask him um, what would be the situation of the staff if they if he will be placed no. I want also the staff of the Knights of Rizal be given what is due to them, you know. Very nice, very nice. And maybe you can ask for a race. I'm just kidding. I don't see anything. <laughs> I can ask for a race for them, yes. Oh, okay. It so is, you're in vo voluntary. For them. So you're voluntary? Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Very nice, very nice. Um, so that, uh, I really appreciate your um, time uh, in this uh, interview and giving us a uh, a very more in-depth um, idea on how the Knights of Rizal runs uh, because you are a, not only a Knight of Rizal, but you're also a staffer, unpaid staffer at that. Uh, but uh, do you have any uh, last words to our viewers? Uh, you just remember, we have an international viewership. So do you have any last words, parting words for them? Mm, just continue what you have started with the Knights of Rizal. You know? being, being a knight is not just for frolics, just for display. You know? uh, we are all brothers here and we should continue to spread, uh, propagate, and inculcate the teachings of Dr. Rizal. But most of all, a Knight of Rizal should imbibe first on himself you know? all the ideals of being a Rizalist. No, we cannot be Knights of Rizal without being uh, uh, being a person who is a role model of Rizal. It's impossible. No? So you should um, be the torch. Um, the Knights of Rizal should be torch bearers of Rizalism. Now, is there uh, before we go? Is there any um, particular announcement you have as far as the international headquarters concerned? Any coming up activities or any coming up publications that you want to tell uh, the uh, Knights of Rizal Universe to look out for? Uh, just wait for our Bagumbayan 2020 issue. No, we are now uh, on our last uh, stage. No, we're editing the final um, articles no, together with our layout artist and uh, Sir Mark Boado. And then um, the elections, no? um, I hope that uh, the restrictions for COVID-19 will be lifted so that um, one day we'll be together no? and uh, enjoy you know, the resilient fellowship that we have. And um, I hope that uh, our chapters and areas all over the world can establish Kabataan uh, Pangarap ni Rizal. So for further inquiries, you can uh, inquire you know, the headquarters or me. Because you, know, um, you will pass the resilient leadership to our youth and it Kaparis is a better training ground for them, just like what happened to me. I was trained by Kaparis. Now I'm at the Knights of Rizal. It's easy for me to handle leadership roles because of my previous training when I was in Kaparis. Well, thank you very much. Non omnis moriar. Non omnis moriar.